Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. This is a really short broadcast right now. I'm working on a couple of other broadcasts tonight. Don't know if I'll get them done in time, but I wanted to share a couple of things with you. Uh, the first one here, not really so much uh, a message directly. There's no question about that. I mean, you have fierce fighting. I in do a want to take the country. You mentioned Chernobyl. Russian forces quickly overtaking that area. <laughs> and show you this here, right? The other thing that hang on, hang on. Down today. Um, that was of huge importance was Russian paratroopers went into an airfield hang 15 on, miles outside of Kiev, and for a short period of time this afternoon, they helped. Look, I, you know, we're going to use the at least, at least 59 people killed, at least. Okay, at least 59 killed, right? And they're all in behind him on this broadcast here. But uh, while they're trying to film their propaganda piece, the one guy keeps resurrecting from the dead. <laughs> so I'm like, this was just too funny to me to watch this. So I had to share that with you just for a moment there, guys. I knew you'd get a little humor out of that as well. Uh, uh, Aza uh, at Aza underscore B2 is the one that shared that there. Thank you for sharing that here with us on Twitter there. I have to follow this person here. They put out some interesting stuff. Uh, but what I really want to talk real quick about, though, is, and, and, and I knew about the attack moments after it happened. I had not reported on this as of yet there. Uh, the attack on the uh, Crimean port, uh, the Svest in Svestopol, Crimea there, the Russian seaport there where they repair their ships there, 10 uh, according to the Russian reports there, 10 uh, missiles, uh, British-made missiles were used, uh, cruise missiles, in this attack on uh, Russian, on Russian uh, positions there at the Svestopol there uh, inside Crimea. 24 people, according to the Russian uh, report there, RT reporting it, Sputnik reporting it, that were injured. Uh, I'm sure there were fatalities without a doubt. It's just, you know, naturally in wartime, they don't normally report those. Uh, they don't like the rest of the world knowing just how serious that is there. Uh, but yes, they were hit. And what's even more interesting uh, as a result of this is that I was on with Dave Hodges uh, this morning. At least we uh, we did a pre-recorded broadcast there. And Dave and I uh, were speaking about that, and that's on his program. Uh, in fact, I can't wait to get Dave over here to talk some of this stuff with you guys, especially uh, to talk about Maui. I asked Dave if he would come on hopefully later this week uh, and discuss with us about Maui. He's got some amazing insights on Maui. But uh, Dave and I were talking about the strike in Crimea. Uh, in, in, and as we brought about this, uh, I know that David asked me about September 23rd, uh, and not only September 23rd, I think it's tomorrow as well, they're looking at having a grid down uh, scenario. In fact, there's a lot of speculation that on uh, the 23rd of September, our power grid is going to go down for two months. Yeah, believe it or not, two months. And so in talking about this, I shared with Dave some intel that I knew about going back uh, when the Chinese balloons were coming over uh, America. And at that time, I was being told that what was happening is that the Chinese were basically sending a signal that they're getting ready to take Taiwan down. Uh, and we know there's a lot happening in regards to that. Uh, as a result of that, I was told that the Chinese, that using the balloons, they would have their cameras on there because it's closer than satellite to the ground, so therefore they could get better images. And they were looking at our power infrastructure, they were looking at our military bases to see which ones really were operational. Uh, they were looking at our logistics that we have here on the ground. All these things I was being told about, but as well, I was told that uh, in the event that we were to get ready to go to war, one of the main things that they would want to target is our power system. And as a result, the United States government would actually bring the power grid down ourselves to keep that damage from occurring. Well, with this talk about a power grid going down, and, and I have no indication that that's really true, so I'm just telling you straight up, I don't have any intel that says that that really is going to happen. I cannot confirm that information. But when I saw the attack on Crimea, and at the same time knowing that there is this threat 
of our power grid going down for two months, I could not help but realize that this would be the very thing that would justify if the U.S. takes down our power grid, in other words, if we take it down ourselves, but blame it on Russia or blame it on China, in this case here, it'd be blamed on Russia because it would be a retaliatory measure. In other words, Russia did it as a result of retaliation for the strike on Crimea, on the Russian naval fleet at the base at Svestopol. Very real possibility. And I can certainly see where that could happen. And of course, that would be the stage. The other thing that I knew too back then is that because of Great Britain and because of Germany getting more involved in the Ukrainian conflict, uh, supplying weapons, things like that, the Abrams tanks, all the things that are going on over there, that Russia would counter-strike eventually either England or Germany in a retaliatory measure. It is believed that during 2024, next year, not this year now, mind you, next year, that there is a real possibility of a nuclear strike in one of those two nations by Russia. Um, and again, could something like this cause Russia to strike back like that? Maybe so. Now, oddly enough, I, there's no doubt Russia is going to retaliate for the Crimean strike there, whether it be tonight, whether it be a week from now, whether it be two weeks from now. Remember, Russia does much like the United States does in counteroffensive. Once they've suffered a pretty heavy blow or an embarrassing blow, which this is more embarrassing than it is... Uh, uh, than it is, uh, oh, how would you say it, than damaging, Russia will have a retaliatory strike. But as a general rule, it's not going to be in the mainland United States. But boy, howdy, what do you know? Wouldn't you know that there's a very real possibility that they could bring, we could bring down our own system, blame it on Russia, cause chaos to ensue here in this country, cause the country to, to turn into uh, uh, pandemonium when people have no internet, no power, no gas for their cars because after all you take down the grid, you stop the fuel supply, you stop the grocery stores from operating properly. People, whether they're in the heat or in the cold of winter, whatever the, whichever the case may be, could really cause some major problems. Martial law breaks out in the land. And what do you know? Well, guess what? They just may end up forcing some of their plans that they had planned on a couple of years ago. They would then be able to force it, especially if there's some kind of new outbreak going on out there, right? Hmm. I guess you can read between the lines on that one. Anyway, um, I just wanted to kind of share those thoughts with you. I've got something, too, I personally want to speak about. I'm going to do a video on. I haven't decided where I'm going to load it at as of yet. It'll probably be on Israeli News Live, iConnectFX.com. Uh, this is completely outside of the scope of any of my own family members. Uh, I'm just going to share with you some very, very personal uh, issues that I have with things that we've been sharing with you already. So I hope you watch for that. It won't be here directly on INL, uh, but you will be able to see it. God bless you. Thank you for listening. I can't wait to get back in the saddle of teaching once again. And of course, I am going to be really trying to press out some news information for you. By the way, our, our special guest that was supposed to be live tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern, we're having to reschedule for next week. I guess it's obvious we didn't go live. I apologize for not letting you know sooner. Uh, and I haven't really got that quite going right yet. So we're going to have to do some uh, testing over this next few days here. I'm going to try to do some live programs to make sure our live platform is working once again. Uh, and uh, I'm going to share with you this weekend who that special guest is. Because I guarantee you one thing, you're going to want to be there when we go live. I have a feeling we're going to top 10,000 people live on the broadcast when we do go on that program. So anyway, get ready. Steve Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And thank you for supporting this ministry. You guys, I really want to tell you thank you for that. Um, I know my wife has been writing some of you uh, individually and personally. And I thank God for that, that she's doing that. Uh, and I want to do that as well myself. I like to write you guys as well to say thank you. 
and uh, you can easily go to our website. I'll just quickly throw that up. You got it up on the screen already, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Uh, also at, by my name, Stephen Ben-Noon, uh, at P.O. Box 156 Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. And... Uh, Check it out there. Oh, by the way, that video right there, the director of 911 sets the record straight there. I thought that that was something that was important to put out as well uh, because those, those operators, the 911 operators that were involved in the uh, Cranford uh, crash there, you know, they really are some good Christian ladies there that certainly needed to have the story set straight for their integrity's sake. And by the way, Billy actually, uh, from what I understand, he went there the following day after my wife went there to tell them thank you. Uh, he was very grateful for what they did. Rather than um, putting out a bunch of lies about them, he went there to thank them. So we, we appreciate that. We really appreciate Billy uh, doing that as well. So God bless you and thank you for listening.